Said I'm taking big shots Just stop, way I'm driven, no piss stops I ain't missing cause you know I'm taking big shots this effect is pretty dope. It's uh, frame by frame, and then you take each frame and you individually put it into Photoshop and apply some generative fill to it. Now it sounds like it's gonna take forever, but I have a couple techniques that will speed that up. And I'm also gonna show you this one right here, which is using posterized time as well to make the video at 12 frames per second while the background's still at 24. So let's dive in. But first, click that like button and subscribe for more. So we have some clips in the timeline and now we just have to figure out what we want to change. So on this first clip right here, you can see I speed ramped that so it slows down. All you have to do is find an endpoint that you wanna start the effect and then click C on your keyboard, make a cut. This will just make it easier for you in the long run and then scroll forward to where you want this effect to end. Now, the longer you do that, the more work you have. So for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just gonna go a couple frames. So I have this clip right here. Once it's selected, you can click X and that will highlight that clip right there or you can just set an endpoint with I and an out point with O, and then we're gonna go to File, Export, Media. Now under Format, let's click that and scroll all the way down to PNG. And then we can just export this. So let's just say Basketball, and then click Export. That's gonna automatically export each frame individually as a PNG. Now just open up Photoshop and just drag in your first image. Select your layer, and if you don't see the contextual taskbar right here, go to Window, Contextual Taskbar. You can use a couple different ways to select an object. Typically, I like using the object selection tool because it highlights objects that you can just easily select, but sometimes generative fill works best when you have like a rough selection. So you can use the lasso tool or you can just use the ellipse tool. You can use whatever tool you like, but I've found that sometimes if there's like an object, you don't wanna select it exactly unless it's a person. But I found that sometimes if you give it a little more room, you'll have a better result at getting the object the same size. Before we start anything with generative fill, you can click this down arrow and you can use your device or you can use cloud for more detailed results. And then just click generative fill and let's type ball. Now you can play around with these. If you don't like anything, you can just click generate again. But once you get your generation, just shift click both your layers and hit control E. That will merge it into one layer. Now just drag in your next image. If you're having issues with the object selection tool and it's like making your object too small, for example, like a ball, you can just use the marquee selection tool if you want to get a bigger selection and do the same prompt. This will give generative fill more room to work with. Shift click both of them and merge them. You can also right click merge layers and just do that for the rest of your images. Drag it in, select your object, generative fill, ball. And this is fun because you can get creative with this if you want. Like if you don't want to just type ball, you can just do soccer ball. Now that we have all of our images complete, all you have to do is go up to File, Export, Layers to Files. Browse for the location you wanna to export to. You can set a prefix if you want, and then click Run. This is going to automatically export all of those images we just created. Now back in Premiere, I typically like making a new bin, Gen Fill. And you can stay organized because you may be doing a lot of these, so let's just type Basketball. Now all you have to do is select all of your exported images from Photoshop and drag it into that bin. Right now, order is important. So since we started with our first clip, we actually need to go in reverse order. So start from the highest number and go down. I typically like to make sure that my name and title sorting is with the down arrow. So that six is the highest and zero is down here. So select six, hold shift and select your last image and simply drag that into Premiere. Now, if we scrub through here, you can see we have our image sequence and I dragged it right to the start of that clip that we exported earlier. So now just highlight all of those, right click nest, click R on your keyboard to bring up the rate stretch tool and simply click and drag that so it's the same length as our exported image sequence. And now you can see we have the first example of the frame by frame generative fill replacement. Now let's dive into a little bit more complex example, but this is where it gets fun. So like before, let's find a start point. I'm gonna start right here, click C on my keyboard to make a cut, and then I'm gonna go a couple frames forward to where I want the effect to end. On this clip that I just cut out, I'm also gonna select it, go to the effects tab and type in posterize time. Since my timeline is in 24, I'm gonna actually half this to 12. That way, this little moment right here is 12 frames per second. So when we export this PNG sequence, we'll actually get two images per frame, which will allow our background to be essentially 24 frames per second while the subject is 12 frames per second. Click X over your clip to set the in and out point or I and O, and then go to File, Export, Media. Let's name this one BG for background and make sure format is under PNG and 
click export. Open up Photoshop and let's drag in our first image. When I'm dealing with subjects or backgrounds, I typically like to make sure my object selection tool is selected, and then I'm just gonna select my subject. As you can see, it didn't get all of the ball, so you can just click that again, and it will add to your selection. If you want to add more, you can use the lasso tool and make sure it's on add, and just draw around any areas you want to add into your selection. But for this case, we're actually gonna use the inverse of the selection. So once you draw all your areas that you want to fill, click this invert button right here, and then let's click generative fill and type in court or floor or whatever you want. All right, we have this one, this one, and this one. I actually like the second one, I think that looks good. Shift click both of those, Control E, or right click merge layers. You may be thinking this doesn't look so great, but once you have a couple back to back, it actually looks really awesome. Let's drag in our next image and repeat the process. Object selection, select our subject, make sure we select the areas that it missed, and it doesn't have to be perfect. Invert the selection, generative fill, court. That one looks good, that one looks good. I'm gonna do that one. Shift click both of those, Control E to merge the layers. Let's drag in our next image. Object selection, select our subject. If you get something that you don't want selected, you can use the lasso tool and make sure it's set to subtract up here, and then just draw around your subject that you don't want selected, and it'll delete that from your selection. All right, now that we have everything selected though, let's click invert and court and finish this out. Repeat the same process for the rest of your images. Now that all my images are completed, go to file, export, layers to files, browse to your location, set a prefix if you want and click run. Once they all export, let's go back into Premiere and go to gen fill. Let's create a new bin and let's call this one BG for background. Now let's find all of those images we just exported from Photoshop and drag them into that folder. Again, we wanna go from highest to lowest. So let's start at seven, hold shift, go down to zero and drag that in just like so. Zoom out a little bit, highlight all of our images, right click nest, let's click R to bring up the rate stretch tool and drag that down to the size of our exported PNG sequence. Now you can see if I scroll through here, we have all of our images. Sand is my favorite, that's awesome. So let's play this. So this looks pretty good, but there's a way to make it better. Let's compare it to my beginning example. Looking at the beginning example, as you can see, the player moves a little bit slower than 12 frames per second. That's because on my original clip, I actually slowed it down to 40% before exporting. So as you can see right there, that's probably five frames per second. So play around with speed because that may be your friend to get the desired look. We didn't entirely mess up because all you have to do is kind of highlight your clips and just slow it down a little bit and we get that similar effect. All this footage was graded with my new film Let's Pack, so you guys can pick that up in the description down below if you want. But I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. If you did, click that like button. Let me know what you think down in the comments. And as always, subscribe, because I'm going to be making some more stuff in the future. Big shots, just stop. Way I'm driven, no piss stops. This hot, I ain't playing like a six spot. Pissed off, thought I told him this is chip shot. I ain't missing because you know I'm taking big shots.